Hi there, and welcome to Threat Hunting Series with Cisco's Advanced Threat Solutions. My name is Evgeny, and in this video, we will be leveraging ThreadGrid to hunt for network artifacts associated with the threat actor. ThreadGrid is Cisco's threat intelligence and sample analysis platform that tightly integrates with the rest of the security portfolio and is also used by security analysts for threat investigations and research. In this episode, we start by reviewing the samples that were analyzed by ThreadGrid. We further explore the indicators and the artifacts associated with one of the confirmed malicious files. The goal of this research is to map out attackers' infrastructure elements, such as IP addresses and domains, acting as command and control communication channels. This information could allow us to strengthen the security posture by proactively blocking and preventing access to these malicious destinations, across our entire security architecture. Looking at the ThreadGrid Cloud portal, we spot quite a few samples with different threat scores ranging from low and medium and all the way up to high and critical. Combining this knowledge with contextual data about the presence of these files in our environment is what helps us significantly reduce the amount of time that needs to be spent on manual malware analysis that oftentimes gets quite complex. While samples that score 95 and above are confirmed malicious files, anything that scores 75 to 94 yet requires analyst attention to either confirm maliciousness or determine if the file does not represent a threat. Let's filter down the view to only display confirmed malicious samples that have been trying to target our organization. Taking a closer look at the report of one of these files reveals that there have been no endpoints in our company that have been observed executing this file. That may signify that one of the AMP enabled integrations, like email security appliance integrated with AMP and ThreadGrid, was able to prevent the sample from compromising our organization. Or maybe the sample was simply submitted by a malware analyst using ThreadGrid API or the user interface. Even though the sample did not lead to a compromise, you want to gain a better idea of who the attacker is and what they are up to. Scrolling down to the behaviors view, we spot quite a couple of indicators that signal about communications with a domain marked as a malicious command control channel by Cisco Umbrella. There is a backend integration between ThreadGrid and Umbrella, where each of the products share intelligence with each other to streamline workflows and provide context-rich threat knowledge. Another point is that this quickly tells us that even if the file would execute on the endpoint, Umbrella would be able to prevent command control channel callbacks. It's quite common for attackers to leverage multiple channels for their malicious communications, so we are going to attempt to hunt for additional network indicators associated with the same adversary. Let's get these domains added to a casebook to begin the hunt. You can simply add them through a right-click pivot menu, or you can simply drag and drop them. You can also immediately see how casebook queries the reputation of each observable in the backend. This makes it easier for the security analyst to have an immediate view into the current investigation. Clicking on the domain name itself serves as a pivot point that displays intelligence surrounding the domain. Among other things, we now see the IP addresses that this domain resolves to. We see the communications with one of these IP addresses even triggers multiple snort signatures. Yes, that's right, ThreadGrid also leverages SNORT, a well-known intrusion prevention and detection system for analysis of connections established by a sample during analysis. That helps confirm our hypothesis about maliciousness of these communications. Let's add these IP addresses to our casebook and then let's research each of them one by one. Clicking on the last IP address in the list opens up all the details surrounding this indicator. Another thing that we notice here is a pattern. Even though the top-level domains that resolve to this IP are different, the subdomain is the same. This makes it obvious that all of these indicators relate to the same attacker. And that also makes a good reason to investigate if there are more domains that Trevit knows about and that have the same subdomain. Luckily for us, this information is at our fingertips. We are going to use ThreadGrid's search functionality and look for domains that starts with the same subdomain, leveraging wildcard as needed. This reveals a lot more hosts represented by domains and IP addresses that refer to the same attacker. Let's add them to our current investigation. This is where adding indicators one by one could be tedious. 
so a simple copy-paste in bulk just works fine. Indeed, all of the domains that we have just pasted are now visible inside of the casebook, which now looks way more complete. Let's click on Investigate, which serves as a pivot point to Cisco Threat Response, for the purpose of building a more complete view of the threat actor, leveraging available threat intelligence sources. As we click on Investigate, Cisco Threat Response queries the APIs of the configured modules on our behalf to provide intelligence on indicators that are part of this investigation. It then correlates this intelligence and presents in a single context-rich view. Here we have four modules that have enriched this investigation. We have 23 domains, most of which are marked malicious, though there is one domain that is suspicious and several unknowns. We have indicators from ThreatGrid that signal that some of these domains are used for remote access Trojan communications or that resolve to a sync-hold IP address. And finally, we don't have any endpoints or targets in our environment that were observed communicating with any of the domains or IPs that are a part of this investigation. Looking further through the information displayed, let's take a look at one of the example domains and the intelligence that Cisco Threat Response has pulled for it. For each of the observables, it has judgments coming from configured modules, we have verdicts and we have sightings indicating both local observations of the activity in our own environment as well as the global view. Building a complete view of the threat actor and the potential scope of compromise is essential. That helps come up with a well thought out containment strategy, part of which can be implemented through the same threat response user interface. Acting too soon on the other hand can be a wrong move that notifies the attacker about being detected. In this case, we are not containing anything since the threat didn't make it through the preventative security mechanisms, but we can take precautions by quickly reviewing domain information in Umbrella Investigate and leading to a custom block. If we take a moment to think of what we have achieved in this episode, we have spent just a couple of minutes reviewing the analysis report of one of the analyzed samples. That allowed us to effectively pivot from knowing about a single malicious host on the internet related to the threat actor targeting our organization to knowing about the infrastructure utilized by this adversary. We can use this intelligence not only to check if any of these hosts were contacted by users on our network, but also to proactively block access to them to reduce the risk of being affected by this attacker. And that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for your attention.